Hello and welcome back. Um, now that uh, the handguards are done for the bandit, it's time to turn my attention back to the Sportster um, because with the chopped uh, rear mudguard, the indicators on the back are starting to look m more ridiculous than I'm willing to live with. As I said before, with the standard mudguards on there, it's a, the bike has a 60s look and the uh, indicators I think fit perfectly well. You can take them off if you want but I think it suits the look quite well and I'm perfectly happy with them. They're big, they're easily noticeable, they're designed for what they're, they're good at or they're good at what they're designed for so that's great. However, with the chopped back end um, I've got these two huge lollipops sticking out the back and it looks silly. So it's time to start changing them over um, for something smaller and for that purpose I have bought some uh, small LED uh, indicators. I've not actually done this from scratch myself before so it's a little bit of experimentation as to resistors and all this sort of stuff. Um, unlike some bikes um, I'm not convinced that I would be able to swap out the uh, ignition relay module um, on the on the Sportster. Whilst the later bikes certainly run LEDs, I have my doubts that the indicator module actually is just plug and play. Perhaps it is, um, but until I find that out, I'm just going to use the standard resistors. Um, so it's time to start taking things apart and uh, seeing how it works. Okay, now these are the indicators um, that I'm working with. They're a small micro indicator. The idea is it, I want them to be relatively uh, unseen. As with all this stuff from Asia, it's, it's got the small bullet connectors um, on, although so too you know, I've got these resistors from uh, m and um, maybe they're not the best but we'll see how they work. Um, I'm keeping it plug and play with using the factory connectors um, so that I'm not chopping the wiring harness up, not yet, um, maybe at some point in the future. But since I've never, or I haven't yet found a a source for these small bullet connectors. Um, I'm going to be running with uh, the standard, well standard in this country anyway it seems, there's larger ones and that means actually just modifying them a little bit so they'll take the smaller connectors. Other than that it's a straightforward wiring job. Um, I have a variety of crimping tools. I've yet to find a pair of crimping pliers that will do all of my connectors. Um, it seems to be a question of playing around and finding which pliers actually fit the different connectors best. Um, and certainly these ones are quite good with the factory connectors, um, whereas these wire strippers with the uh, um, connect with a rather rougher uh, connectors or punches and I'm quite sure you would crimps um, the bottom here are better for the bigger fatter standard ones so these are the factory standard um, indicators you can see I've taken them off on the other side already um, and it just looks a bit weird um, it still looks a bit weird with these uh, here sticking out. Um, at the moment it's a mount for the number plate so they're staying. And I'm still torn between what I'm going to do from here. But whatever I do from here can't happen until these indicators come off. Now I had intended, courtesy of Mr Cactus, to actually mount these up here um, that's not focusing at all actually oops, no, I'm trying to 
going to do this with the wrong hands, so let me swap them around. So, it was my intention to actually put them here, You've mount them off, uh, make up a little bracket and mount them off the shock mounting. Um, so they sat here and they were nicely conspicuous, or inconspicuous I should say. Um, but potentially that could be, and they're far enough, they're a bit further out because uh, of a little bit more visibility um, for motorists and the like. Um, but then I realised, um, or remembered I should say, that in uh, the mudguard I've got these holes that were the original mudguard mounting holes. Um, let's say with these, this one. It, didn't have these yes this design that put my teeth back in this mud guard was from an earlier sportster um, that has the curved bars on the back to support it not these straight ones um, but conveniently that means that uh, I have a hole to put these in the front one hole I've still got plans for um, so it's this one I'm thinking of. Now as it happens, even though I've got that bolt head sticking out there, the uh, actual LEDs on the indicator are out here. So they actually do clear. Um, I have some reservations about the rearward visibility of these. Um, but, well... Guess we'll have to see. So there we go. Current. New ones. Hmm. Well, let's see how this works. The first thing is to take this the indicators off. The indicators come off with this cover here. Now as it happens, I've cut through the cover here because I'm not keeping this. Um, and uh, can't be asked to take the shock mounts, the shocks off the mounts just to get this cover off. So I cut it. Um, frankly, it's it's a purely decorative cover, um, and uh, in this one's this one's knackered anyway. Um, it has no resale value, so there's there's no motivation I can think of um, to keep it standard. Okay, let's see how the wiring goes. Right, these are quite straightforward. Just held on by. These two Torx bolts here, and a with that have nuts on the back. Um, on the back of the indicator mounts, there's there's a there's a nut. So it's all fairly straightforward. Um, normally, you would remove the indicator lens in order to get onto this one and the bowl. Um, but I'm hoping, because I've had these off recently, that I can actually just crack it off without needing to worry about that. Uh, the reason this is one so so damaged is because this bolt was originally completely rusted on and I had to cut it off. But these are been these only were on a few weeks ago so they're all still good condition. What I will do is just disconnect the plug. Oh, it's a bit fiddly. Leave 
need three hands to, to get that done. But if you know what you're doing, simple enough. Clever with talks, it's making sure the uh, tool is correctly in it before trying to take it off because otherwise they do slip out and round off and all manner of fun. So. I cut a big slot in here that's no problem come off and there we have it that's stripped off now all I need to do is wire up uh, the indicators cut some connectors off and plug them back in Now, decision time. I need to change the plugs or the connectors on the resistor. Um, I've got a bullet connector coming from the indicators um, and I have a plug, a connector to put on to the wiring harness. Now and what I've got here are two bullet connectors. Now I could make up a female to female uh, piece of wiring to connect the indicators to, but uh, I frankly don't need the extra wiring. Um, it's quite close physically. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going um, to cut both all of these off and rewire it from scratch um, so that's the plan <laughs> always a little bit uh, uh, nervous when chopping up perfectly serviceable pieces of kit but uh, It needs to be done. Now, what I always do, I always forget to put on at least one piece of heat shrink. Um, I'll prepare, I'll have it cut out, I think yes I need to, I'll do this, do this and then in, in the excitement of the moment I get carried away and uh, don't do it. So first things first, let's get uh, these connectors uh, to the wiring harness on and uh, then see about the uh, bullet connectors. get the right one the first time. And that crimped but not enough, the wire's too thin for doing that. So I'm going to have to manually modify it.
always a shame when it doesn't go. That's not. That's not happening. Too thin. Yep. <laughs> Definitely not happening now. Using the wire cutter section is never a good idea when you intend using the part next to it. Let's do a little more wire this time. Double it up. because this isn't a factory crimping tool, it does require just an extra squeeze to get those in place. Okay, so I'm running out of battery, so I'll carry on with this. Right, so it's uh, Wednesday morning, and I'm just giving the bike uh, a quick check over before taking it into work. Into work mainly as a shakedown uh, run to check if the ind indicators carry on working and don't fall off on the short route to and fro. Um, so given the camera battery died there we go so they're now now on they are quite inconspicuous um, those arms are looking ever more ridiculous um, but until I engineer a new solution for the uh, rear plate that's not going to change and I'm still fighting the temptation for a side plate uh, not my massive fan so let's see what they actually look like uh, let's put you down a second. Okay, so um, the bike on uh, hazard mode, and uh, as you can see, they seem okay, um, and it's not too dim in here with these running, so that seems to be all okay. I'm quite pleased with that, um, and uh, so I've still got the massive lollipops. On the front, um, so let me just uh, right, okay. You can have both hands to turn those off. Um, the other thing I have done with the bike is to uh, lower this bracket here, which is the remains of the eyebrow. And now, this used to sit um, on top here so I've got a bolt so actually a couple of odd bolts at the moment so I need to get some more um, and I've simply run a bolt through which is one of the way the kits do it 
uh, to lower so I've got two spacers in here and these bolted onto the bottom which lowers the headlight down quite a long way um, not really enough room here to see it but I'm much happier with the headlight being down there a little bit uh, I've noticed there is a little bit of fouling um, in here um, where the uh, lock uh, sits for the headstock because the headlight bulb does actually just touch that as it hits lock so um, that's where we are at the moment so anyway so next thing is to uh, work on the fronts